What is up everybody, Alex from WMD here. Today we're gonna to talk a little bit more about Scorpion, the waveform reanimator module. This video is more of a get you started and just learn how like learn what you need to know before you need to just, before you just start experimenting. First things first, I'm literally just running a sine wave into the input, we're taking stereo out into the mixer. Um, on the scope, the blue line is the uh, dry legion uh, sine wave. The yellow is the wet signal from the scorpion. So right now we've got just the dry signal. As we turn up the output at the top, we're gonna go 100% wet. Just a little bit more than that is pretty, pretty much 100% wet. If we go all the way over here, we go into a stereo widening function. And so this is really fun to experiment. Right now we're just gonna start with uh, this in the middle. And we've got this switch down here. This is a uh, like the mid side enabling switch. So I'm turning that off for now. Uh, we're just gonna do everything in mono in the beginning and we'll get into stereo here in a little bit. As for switches, asymmetrical, symmetrical switches, hard sync, halt if zero, uh, target order, those switches, just experiment with them. Turn them on, turn them off, see what happens. You can ignore halt if zero for a little while too because this one is gonna be a little bit more of a CV uh, processing uh, helper, I guess. And so uh, I'll do a video on CV uh, processing down the road, but right now we're just focused on audio. But all the switches uh, that I just mentioned, just play around with those. We're gonna focus on the macro setup and target switch and the equalize threshold switch the most today because those are gonna be the most important. So to get started, get your knobs in the same position here, fold all the way up, slope all the way up, uh, shift in the middle, shape in the middle, and then output in the middle. Uh, we're gonna keep the eight-way switch here. We're gonna keep that on input for now and we're gonna put target at clip, right? So how to get started with this module is go right here Start with the knobs like this, put a sine wave into it, turn up one fader. You'll start to hear your wave folding immediately and on the scope you can see, basically I'm just choosing where in amplitude on the waveform I want it to invert. So now we can start adding more. If we put them right next to each other, they'll cancel each other out. But we can just draw a super complex waveform here with the sliders. Next thing to know, slope is basically, you can think of it like a low pass filter. This is the rate at which we're going to fold. So you can see on the scope, I'm speeding it up as I turn it up. When we get to the top, we're just creating super hard edges, which is all those high frequency harmonics coming through. Fold is going to be gain. So this is the gain of the input waveform. So if we only have this up a little bit, we can fold to a point, but now we're not gonna get any folding past here because there's not enough amplitude here. So it's good to just start with it all the way up and then experiment after you've got some faders up with modulating it, turning it up and down. It's a cool sound in its own. Same thing with slope here. This is where you wanna put an envelope. Slope is where you're gonna wanna put like an envelope if you're doing like a percussive voice and you want this to act like a filter. Envelope into the slope input. Shift, great place for modulation. This moves your uh, fold points around in phase on the waveform. And then we have shape. Shape is a shaped feedback control. Basically, you're taking different outputs, um, different places we could take outputs from in the circuit and feeding them into slope for audio rate modulation of this. So that's where that feedback comes from. So. If we have slope down quite a bit, we turn it up, we start to get that feedback, and we can experiment with the different places that feedback comes from, and then what effect that has when we change the other knobs. All right, so the next thing to talk about is equalized thresholds. So we can set our own thresholds here, but we can also just flip this switch to either of the left positions. And what that's gonna do is basically set our faders in a straight line, perfectly spaced across the waveform like this. So now we've got a perfectly spaced set of wave folders. And this is kind of like easy mode. You just turn this on, start messing with some knobs, gonna get some really good sounds. 
Next thing to talk about is the target mode. So right now we're using clip, which is using the input signal. And basically what targets means is that after we fold the waveform, we have to go somewhere with that signal. And so when clip mode, it's gonna go back to either the input signal or to whatever signals in the clip input. So pro tip, try putting other waveforms from other modules and stuff into that clip input, see what happens. It's a fun experiment for sure. Um, if we go to clip, we go from clip, we can go to five volts. Now you can see we've just got a brick wall here on the oscilloscope. Again, easy mode is equalized thresholds on and uh, five volts. And then sliders, we can set our own targets. We use that, with, we do that with this three-way switch here. So this guy is basically like a button. We hold it to the left, and now we can draw in our own targets. Everything down, there's no place for those waveforms to go, so we just get pretty much a straight line. As we bring these in, we can it basically enable the wave folders, but also say how, like, what the amplitude's gonna be when we get to the end of that wave folding um, section or segment. So super fun thing to experiment with, just drawing in your own. One thing I didn't talk about was e with equalized thresholds yet is CV into this. So jack means that when you send CV into this, it's going to give you gate high equals equalized thresholds on. So just to say, show that real quick, we'll go here, do a nice long gate. And we're using a gate to turn it on and off. If we go to the middle, we've got XOR. This means it's being inverted, like the input behavior is being inverted. On is just gonna stay on all the time. So that's something good to know if you want to use CV for the equalized thresholds and also why that's called jack. So in jack, we've got control and then with no CV in, both of these is just gonna turn it on for equalized thresholds. All right, so really the last thing we need to talk about is the macro setup. So I'm gonna go back to clip here and to turn on your macros, what we like to call animation, is you just tap this switch to the right like it's a button. Just click it once and it'll turn on, click it again, it'll turn off. To set up your macros, I'm gonna hold it to the right and you've got macro envelope release and attack here. So you can see when I, right now, it's just instant on, instant off and this is showing us the envelope. We can slow that down and let it swell in by making these two faders a little bit higher. That just makes it a little bit more smooth, a little bit more natural feeling. And again, a nice thing when you're using CV to turn on the macro envelope. Uh, macro envelope input just takes a gate to turn this on and turn it off. Um, so that's how you do that. Uh, you can click it or you can use a gate put input into macro envelope. Gate high equals macro envelope on. And one uh, quick little tip is if your macro envelope is on via the button, CV is not gonna work. It's only going to work when it's off. So if the macro envelope's not turning off uh, when you've got CV turning it on and off, double check that it's uh, not enabled by unplugging and just turning it off, putting that uh, CV back in afterwards. So next thing we can do is we can modulate all of our thresholds. So if I set all these in the middle, we have threshold LFO amount, turn that all the way up. Then we have the rate for that LFO here. While we're holding this to the right, I let go. If I turn it off, I'm gonna make these instant again, turn it on. Let's just do that real quick. All right, so now we are modulating all of our thresholds and it's one LFO controlling the speed of seven other LFOs. So each one has their own individual one, uh, but their rates are on a weighted scale compared to the first one. So everything's a little different. So that gives you some cool modulation just right out of the gate. And then we can do uh, four LFOs over these four knobs here. So with these, we set their rates with these faders here 
All of these labels that are now vertical, this is like showing us what we can control when we're holding the switch to the right. We let go, I've still got it enabled. Now we just enable these guys with their attenuverters and we get lots of different modulation here. And the last thing to talk about is that switch I was talking about to get into mid side. So we're going to turn on mid side. Now we're going to go wide. Two more cool tips. Um, make sure to experiment with the clip input here put the knob to clip and put a completely different waveform from a different oscillator in here that will constrain your targets to that input. And um, that gets some really cool wild sounds. And the other thing is if you're using a voice um, that you're using like a melody or a bass line, just molt your uh, one volt per octave that you're using for your oscillator into the one volt per octave on Scorpion, just like you would a filter to have that filter track. What that's gonna do is it's basically going to help the slope track one volt per octave. So the higher you go, the faster, more harmonics you're gonna get, the lower you go, the more rounded off it's gonna be. That just makes it sound a little bit more natural. And then really the last tip with this thing is just to experiment. Put a bunch of different stuff into this thing. I love putting drums into it. Um, with your voices, experiment putting the filter before Scorpion, then putting it after. Trying different things, putting a VCA before it or a VCA after. All of this just gives you a ton more room to play and just that's the whole point of this thing is just to experiment with, uh, with sound. It really is just like a total sonic playground. So put a bunch of different stuff into it. Um, if you want more information on everything that's in here, check out our long form video and uh, be sure to check out our video of just all sounds. I basically jammed for an hour, uh, just putting a bunch of different stuff into Scorpion and seeing what, come, what came out. And uh, yeah, super fun. So that's it. That's where I think, that's everything I think you need to know and nothing more. So uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you check out Scorpion and uh, yeah, we'll see y'all next time. Peace.